Caribbean nation of Haiti has postponed a presidential election. Four U.S. states have declared states of emergency, and it's all because of Hurricane Matthew. As it approached the island nation of Bahamas last night, Matthew's wind spun at 120 miles per hour. That made it a Category 3 hurricane. But forecasters predicted it would get stronger before reaching the U.S. That could happen tonight. That could be delayed until Saturday. Meteorologists don't know for sure where Matthew was headed, but they had a cone, a potential range to work from. So when you take a hurricane right inside that center eye wall, that's where you're going to have the strongest winds, right around that center, the cluster of thunderstorms. That's where we have the 120 mile per hour winds. Once you fan the storm out, the winds start to get a little bit less and less. With this particular hurricane, the hurricane winds extend about 45 miles from the center, and then tropical storm force winds extend nearly 200 miles from the center. So when you're looking at the track of this, if this storm tracks right down the middle, if it brushes that coast and stays a little bit offshore, you are going to have slightly weaker winds than say if this storm pushed on shore, that's when you could have catastrophic uh, 120 mile per hour winds plus onshore with all of the storm surge as well as the very, very heavy rainfall. Best case scenario, it stays to the east side of the cone, stays offshore, and the winds aren't quite as great. You'll still get high surf, beach erosion, but you won't have those strong hurricane force winds. If this storm, once again, though, tracks right down the center line, we could see uh, devastating winds, though, across much of the coast of Florida, as well as storm surge, a lot of rainfall, and beach erosion. Florida Governor Rick Scott said yesterday that everyone in his state must prepare for a direct hit. Mandatory evacuations were in place for several coastal areas in Florida and South Carolina. On its destructive path through the Caribbean, Hurricane Matthew was blamed for at least 10 deaths in the Dominican Republic, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and Haiti. That's why Floridian officials were taking no chances. Uh, the National Guard deployed, more than 500 National Guards member, uh, members have already been deployed across the state. There are evacuation orders uh, just south of us in Brevard County, uh, and you can expect those to expand, especially in the coastal areas and barrier islands like the one we're on right now. Uh, gas stations with huge lines, even reports that some gas stations have run out of gas. Uh, there are also aisles, at, uh, and aisles and aisles at grocery stores that have been emptied out by people buying water and non-perishable food items. So people are heeding this warning, even though things outside right now look calm and beautiful. They will not be that way once this hurricane gets closer to Florida. On Tuesday night, the two U.S. candidates for vice president sat down with a moderator for their one and only debate. Indiana Governor Mike Pence is on the Republican ticket with businessman and television personality Donald Trump. Virginia Senator Tim Kaine is on the Democratic ticket with former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. Vice presidential debates have been characterized as proxy events, meaning they're not always about the two people on the stage, their records and their policies, but more about the people they're running with, defining and defending the presidential candidates. Okay. Gentlemen, the, Nixon the standard, people at home cannot understand some... either one of you when you speak over each other. I would please ask you to wait until it is that the other is finished. <laughs> Donald Trump must give the American public his tax returns to show that he's qualified to be president, okay. and he's yeah. breaking his promise. You can roll out the numbers and the, and the sunny side, but I got to tell you, people in Scranton, no different. People in Fort Wayne, Indiana, no different. And the answer to this economy is not more taxes. And thank you, but, thank, but, but thank you, thank you, Senator. These guys have praised yeah. Vladimir Putin as a yes, great leader. We'll how how get can to they that, defend Senator? That? Well, we're Senator, about I must have hit a, I, uh, uh, I must have hit a nerve mates. here Why because the disconnect? you know there's an old proverb that says the Russian bear never dies; it just hibernates. And the truth of the matter is the weak and feckless foreign policy of Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama has awakened an aggression in Russia. Senator, if your son or my people, son handled classified information the way Hillary children, Clinton did, they'd be court-martialed. He's called women slobs, pigs, dogs, disgusting. He went after John McCain, a POW, and said he wasn't a hero because he'd been captured. Uh, there they go again. I have said to Governor Pence, I can't imagine how you can defend your running mate's position on one issue after the next. And yet, he is asking everybody to vote for somebody that he cannot defend. I'm just trying to keep up with the insult-driven campaign on the other side of the I'm, table. I, you know, I'm just saying facts about your running mate. Yeah. 
few references to their running mates in those clips. And the next time that Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton meet face to face will be Sunday night at 9 p.m. Their second debate will have a town hall format, meaning many of the questions will be asked by members of the audience. We don't know yet if the nation of Libya will come up, but the North African country is where the U.S. supported the fight against former Libyan leader Muammar Gaddafi in 2011. Its condition today could pose a major challenge for either Trump or Clinton. Here are some reasons Libya could be the biggest global problem for the next U.S. president. The country's in chaos as ISIS lose ground in Syria and Iraq has become their fallback stronghold. And to make matters worse, there's no central government to battle them. Libya is close to Europe and there are fears that ISIS is smuggling fighters among the thousands of refugees and migrants using the Mediterranean route to arrive in Europe each month. It's a magnet for poor, young and sub-Saharan Africans who head north for a better life. This risk them becoming an endless supply of recruits for jihadists. To the moon! Again, that's where a number of international teams are racing to go, not with human astronauts this time, but with a lander and a robotic rover. The technology company that started the competition wants to inspire scientists and business people to find relatively low-cost ways to explore space. And while the prize money is tens of millions of dollars, it's not worth the effort in terms of cost alone. So why participate? That's one small step for man. In today's dollars, it costs nearly $140 billion to put a man on the moon. One giant leap for mankind. It was the culmination of the Cold War space race. 30 private teams from 16 countries. Now another space race is nearing its end. The $30 million Google Lunar X Prize. Teams have to put a rover on the moon, move it 500 meters in any direction, and feed back high-definition video from the lunar surface. The teams must be almost entirely privately funded, and they have until December 31st, 2017. Two teams lead the way towards that deadline, an American team, Moon Express, and the Israeli team, Space IL. Israel is the startup nation, so we are the startup nation must continue to be leading in all these branch of technologies. Space IL was the first team to book their launch to the moon sometime next year. Why is all of this so necessary? We visit Space IL at Israel Aerospace Industries, putting on jackets and hats to enter the clean room. This is where satellites are built, and this is where Space IL will construct their spacecraft. First prize is $20 million, and yet it costs much more than $20 million to get to the moon. Why do this? Well, of course not for the price. There are many reasons why to be there. We, as an Israeli team, we would like to put Israel, Israel technology on the moon next to the Russian, the Americans, and China. So we believe that by itself is a great achievement. CEO Eran Privman remembers watching man first step on the moon. He was just a little boy. It was a moment of inspiration that he uses to this day at Space IL. If we accomplish it, then we definitely open a new era for a commercial travel to either the moon or to Mars or to elsewhere. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. That would have sounded like science fiction a few years ago, and that may be the real mission of the Google Lunar X Prize, to redefine what's possible. Orrin Lieberman, CNN, Central Israel. Before we go, it's like a combo, football, juggling, ballet, and the circus, so thank goodness for slow motion. This comes to us from Imagine Video. Flea flicker play, QB throws deep, the receiver's well covered, the pass is deflected, and then the fun begins. After more bobbles and hiccups than we can count, the pro titans of the Western Communities Football League score a very hard-won touchdown. It's how Butterfingers turn to glue. And you can see how we couldn't pass up the chance to show you how the play was so well received. He might have been cornered and initially caught some criticism for having bobble hands, but at the end of it all, he was in the zone, y'all. I'm Carl Azus, and that's Yardley, the only puns we've got. Catch us again tomorrow.